Hi folks, welcome to Community Pulse. I'm your host, Brian Lamore. On today's show, we'll be talking about another Lost and Foundation fundraiser that will be coming up on Sunday, October 23rd. The Lost and Foundation has had 44 fundraising events. They've raised almost $450,000 over 21 years. And they've also raised about that amount of money, $450,000, by helping other people put on fundraisers for their loved ones. This one that's coming up is Sunday, October 23rd. It's from 2 to 9 p.m. We'll be, it's a benefit for Conrad Addison. He's a, a Helena person who actually graduated from Carroll College uh, in pre-med. And he was just about to start his residency when he had a mountain bike accident and is now a quadriplegic. He is in the Seattle area, but uh, he hopes to come back to Helena where his wife is and she's working in Great Falls. So of course we have some wonderful guests today from the Lost and Foundation. We have our usual suspects. We have Pat Foster, <laughs> you're the president hey, of the Lost and Foundation. Welcome back. And John Moore, you're the treasurer. Welcome back yes. to the show. It's great to have you here. Good to be back. Well, Pat, let's start at the top. You know, Lost and Foundation, you've been around 21 years. <laughs> yeah, we've been at this a while. Yeah, yeah. time yeah. went fast. Uh, yeah. Tell us what the Lost and Foundation does and how you uh, meet your uh, objectives. Well, you know, we have three basic uh, uh, services that we offer. The uh, large benefits like this one, of course. We do two of those a year, once in the fall, once in the spring. And then um, we also, because we can't do it all the time, Yeah. Um, we help other people, we show them how to do a benefit, let them use some of our resources, guide them through it, make sure that they're successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've, we've been real successful at, at doing that. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing we do is, um, you know, we have some investments and whatnot, and we have small amounts of money that are available to help uh, people with, uh, you know, smaller needs. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a lot of requests for help um, in getting um, you know, travel, funds to get to treatment or um, uh, very often we find people that have they have the treatment all lined up they got everything all lined up but they can't afford to stay there yeah and so they need a little help to you know with housing and stuff like that uh, once in a while we'll buy a piece of medical equipment for someone stuff mm -hmm. of that nature yeah and you know sometimes uh, you you do small grants and sometimes you do large fundraisers what are some of the criteria to do a larger fundraiser to to help individuals that's the probably the toughest thing we do yeah. uh, you know we take applications all the time and before we uh, you know several weeks before the time to do our fall benefits say mm -hmm. we look at the applications that are there and we try to determine okay where can we do the most good where can we be the most effective who can we help the most if, you know because we only get to pick one mm -hmm. and uh, that's probably the toughest thing we do is, is determining who we can help and and who we can't. I mean, you can't. And now you do two fundraisers a year. You do one in the spring, yep. do one in the fall. And let's talk about the fundraiser. What's the mechanics of that? How, what's the kind of the uh, sugar to invite everybody in to, uh, to the event that you have? Well, we like to think of it as the uh, biggest party of the season. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we, we get, we're all musician based. Mm -hmm. Lost and Foundation has always been musician based. And for these events, the uh, Helena musicians and in, in, in Montana musicians in general get together, they come, they play for free, they donate their time, their talent, their energy. Mm -hmm. And we put 15 bands up on three stages, you know, from 2 o'clock till 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Every 45 minutes, there's another band up on another stage and, uh, you know, you always find some kind of music you like. If you yeah. like music, it's the place to be, mm -hmm. uh, period. Mm -hmm. It's more diverse than the radio stations. <laughs> well, it's real diverse, you know. We have jazz, we have blues, we have rock, we have country. Name a genre. Uh, yeah. We try to have a little bit of everything. And you know, the musicians hang out before and afterwards. You want to meet the musician, you get to know them. You know, Helen is kind of a small musician group. They yeah. all know each other and they have new bands. But this year we have some uh, bands that are coming from out of town too, right? Can you tell us more? Yeah, we're real excited. Um, we've got uh, Laney Lou and the Bird Dogs coming up from Bozeman. If you've never seen them, they are so much fun. Uh, they like to think of themselves as, as old-time music played with a rock and roll feel. Mm -hmm. And they are. They're just hugely energetic, very entertaining, and hugely talented. Yeah. Um, and from Billings, we have a band called Alder Lights. 
and they're more of a, a young person's band, if you will, <laughs> you know, rock, pop, blues, and, and with electronic elements. Mm -hmm. uh, very uh, alternative kind of stuff, and something you don't get to hear around Helena that often, so mm -hmm. we're real excited to have them. And we also have, uh, out of Missoula, Insomnia Plague, and they're uh, <laughs> kind of a modern uh, folk original uh, group, and uh, again, a lot of energy and, and some very talented uh, uh, musicians. Um, other than that, we, you know, we have lots of uh, um, the local Helena music scene. Uh, some of the best of the crop uh, are always at these events. We have the Essentials coming. Uh, they're a broad range of music, and they've just got a killer groove. Yeah. John actually plays in <laughs> with yeah. them. And uh, we're going to have the Last Chance Belly Dancers again. Ah, they always great. make it fun. A lot yeah. of, uh, you know, just a little bonus extra fun. Uh, Reagan Clancy and a uh, Animal Midnight, I believe, is going to be there. Tucker Down is going to be there. Uh, Justin Case is going to be there. A mm -hmm. um, couple of newer things in town. The Sideshow with Ron Morrison is going to be there. And uh, the Six Shooters. And um, I think Stumbling Free is going to be on board, too. Oh, that's great. Well, we have uh, more of this information on your website and on your Facebook page. And that's Lost End Foundation. The word is and, and there's also the, uh, I'll call it the ampersand that is and too. Which which one is it under on uh, Facebook? The Facebook, it's uh, the word and as well. The word and yeah, too. The, the, okay. the internet just doesn't really love an ampersand. <laughs> it seems to confuse it. So we, <laughs> Not even in passwords. <laughs> we, have a, we have a little schizophrenia with our name there. <laughs> okay, dual, <laughs> dual personalities. Well, John, let's talk with you. You know, this is a fundraiser. And how do you generate funds at this event? Well, that's a good question. We ask for donations of people coming in. It's a completely mm -hmm. voluntary donation, but if they would give $5 at the door, mm -hmm. that's a big help. That's up to people's own feeling about what they want to give and yeah. what they want to do. And then we also have a silent auction going on up until about 7.30. So it starts at 2, goes to about 7.30. We have raffles, and these are all donated items by local merchants and other mm -hmm. craftspeople and artists. Mm -hmm. So the Helena community is very generous in that regard, and we've seen that so many times, not with only with our events, but with plenty of other events as well. Yeah. And so we really do appreciate the Helena businesses and what they, what they donate, and other folks as well. And we'll have 50-50 drawings. Mm -hmm. So that's mainly it. There's the, the auction, the raffles, 50-50, and then just individual donations. Okay, and then uh, individuals, if they can't make it, they can go to your website and you have the ability to accept uh, financial contributions, right? Yes, there. we do. There's a donate now button right on the main page. So, mm -hmm. And what's always important, it's a 501c3, and what is that, John? Well, 501c3 <laughs> is recognized by IRS as a charitable organization. That means donations are tax deductible. Mm -hmm. And we keep close track of all donations and send out postcards generally afterwards yeah. uh, for people to have as a tax receipt and we were very conscientious about getting that done. Mm -hmm. I know I've gotten them for things that I've donated and reminders that I won something. <laughs> <laughs> Come in and pick it up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, but there's some wonderful things that have always been donated and I know at the Colonial, the Radisson here in Helena, you have tables upon tables upon tables of donated items and how it, it, normal, I say normal, but uh, regular people can make a donation too if they're an artist or if they have something they'd like to donate, right? Sure. We would encourage that. The main thing is we'd like to get the stuff in beforehand, probably by October 18th, mm -hmm. because we have to catalog all that stuff and, and decide how we're going to display it and whether it's going to be in a raffle or the silent auction. So there's quite a bit of work that goes into putting one of these together. And speaking of the Radisson Colonial, mm -hmm. they are... Uh, likewise generous in having us, letting us use their space mm -hmm. on a Sunday all day. Yeah. Uh, it's been very good. They have, they'll have some food service available in one of the rooms, which is, you know, generally pulled pork and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. that also generates some funds from it. And yeah. they also usually do a pretty good bar business for a Sunday <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you get all those musicians together. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, John, when we talk about the bar, you know, uh, but this is a family event, and the, we encourage to bring the children, too, because it's a great exposure to all these different bands and people having fun. But you have a focus on the children, too. And how do you, uh, I'll say, entertain the children? Well, there is a children's room set aside, and there's no real age limit, but, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, often we have a bouncy, one of those big blow-up bouncy things in there. Home Depot's been very generous in 
donating kits for kids to work on. So you walk by that room and you hear the tap tap bam, of hammers. Bam, bam, yeah. bam, 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 bam. <laughs> and the kids get a little apron and they're so proud of their airplanes or their birdhouse that they built. So it's a lot have, of fun. We have fun. other activities for the kids, you know, games. and mm -hmm. uh, It's really kind of a, a fun affair for the children. We uh, I get a kick out of um, kids running down the hall to show their parents, look what I did, look what I did. <laughs> So there's some supervision there too uh, yes. of the children so the parents can mingle and then you can bring the children out and you can go to the different uh, uh, venues and see the yeah, different well, bands with What them. I love, I love to see the children dancing. Yeah. You know, quite often <laughs> the adults are a little shy, you know, they're kind of yeah. waiting for somebody to get out there before they get up and dance. And the kids, they just get out there and have a <laughs> great time. It's, it's awesome. I love it. They enjoy dancing more than some older people do. <laughs> you know, They're better at it. Not too. as self-conscious <laughs> as, as that. So it's a lot of fun. They do have bar service. And the, the Colonial Radisson, they really remodeled. And I love their remodel that oh, they've, they've done. Oh, they've done a beautiful job. Yeah. They've spent millions of dollars. Really? Their, their new lounge is gorgeous mm -hmm. and very, very comfortable. The ballrooms where the music will be, they're very, very comfortable. Uh, they've changed just about everything, the color, the lighting. The carpet. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. they, they've really done an astounding job. Radisson has really, really supported the uh, um, the colonial Helena Colonial. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit more about um, Conrad Addison and uh, Pat. Can you give us a little bit more background on him? I mean, he was uh, uh, well. He's a Carroll College graduate and pre-med. Yeah, you know, um, we haven't met him yet. We're hoping. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're actually hoping quite strongly that he'll be here for the benefit, which yeah. would be would be awesome. John has talked a little bit with him. Um, he just seems like a remarkable young man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he he graduated top of his class. Oh. Um, I, I believe he was out vacationing in in Bellingham, and uh, that's you know when the accident happened. But he was mm -hmm. up. He was waiting to start his residency, mm -hmm. and um, he was. Uh, given the uh, Student of the Year Award. Mm -hmm. They brought him back for that, to mm -hmm. receive that at Carroll. So, you know, he's very well liked, very well known in the, um, in the Helena uh, mountain biking community. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of the bands um, have contacted us and said, hey, Conrad's a good friend, I wanna play. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's, uh, he's, he's very well connected with the Helena community mm -hmm. and just seems to be a, re a remarkable young man. And he's, He's really uh, committed to overcoming, uh, you know, this this uh, terrible um, uh, event, mm -hmm. and um, he's starting to get a little bit of movement out of one arm. I understand, is that? Yep. And, um, and that they say that's that, that's that's absolutely remarkable, and it's very early mm -hmm. on. So yeah. you know, there's some hope that um, that maybe uh, things things will turn out. Mm -hmm real well for him. Well, now he's married and his wife lives in Helena, right? Yeah, and she's Lauren. in the medical field too. She's, yes, she's a physician assistant. Mm -hmm. And she uh, had just started the job in Great Falls, so she's been commuting up there. Mm -hmm. And his parents, Bryce, or Addison's parents live in Great Falls, so there's mm -hmm. some support there. And he, you know, this happened in May, so it's been four months, yeah. with the last part of May, close, uh, on Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And we're just hoping for the best of it's going to be gradual, but we're hoping for good recovery, and at least he would be able to take up his profession as a physician. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a remarkable family. His his uh, sister, um, who actually uh, brought the application to Lawson Foundation, mm -hmm. um, Kara Addison, she's a local dermatologist. Yeah. So they're all, you know, <laughs> they're, they're built on helping people, and yes. I think it's fair to give it back. Give it back. and. And uh, I know on um, uh, some of the posters that you have, you mentioned uh, what the funding can go to help support uh, in his recovery. What are some of the items that he'll he'll need to purchase and hopefully his fundraising they have goes to, for They him? have to rebuild. Uh, well, like currently he's living um, with his wife Lauren's parents in Seattle. That's mm -hmm. where she's from. And uh, they had to rebuild their house. They had to um, get a van. Mm -hmm. um, they had to build a special room for him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of construction cost. Yeah. You know. And the ongoing medical uh, expenses with uh, quadriplegia is, it, it just never goes away. It, yeah. it, and every bit of it is expensive. Mm -hmm. And there's travel for the family to go out there and, and be with them and meanwhile carrying on their lives here. So we just hope that we can make a good dent in that. 
Mm -hmm. um, I realize our benefits never completely make anyone whole right, just yeah. because of the high expenses. But it's often more than the money, too. I think it's the coming together of community for support of somebody mm -hmm. like Conrad. Absolutely. Yeah, and it helps in the recovery to know that the community is there for you. We've mm -hmm. seen it make miracles, I'll tell you. Yeah. But I imagine it's tough to ask, I mean, to say, uh, to come to you and say, can you help me out? I mean, there's probably a lot of hesitancy there, right? I don't know that I could do it, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things we always ask people, are you willing to be public with the situation? That just has to be part of it. And mm -hmm. that can be kind of hard. But yeah. uh, they've been very gracious. Kara's still the contact person uh, who is Addison's sister, as Pat mm -hmm. mentioned. And uh, a lot of enthusiasm there yeah. for, for g helping her brother out. Well, that's wonderful. I know uh, I've had some friends that have done fundraisers for you guys, and you did a great success or a great success result of that. And I encourage people to contact you ver via your phone number, your website, or Facebook to get more information on how you can possibly apply for this and might be able to get a little bit of help because you, you do help with that. But now, you know, when you say foundation, there's a lot of talk about foundations in the news these days. Uh, what percentage of the funds that are generated actually get to the individual to help them? Well, when we do a, a full benefit like this, there's mm -hmm. a lot of expenses. There's advertising and overhead and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so we, we ask for 10% um, of the overhead from one of these large benefits. And frankly, m most of that 10% ends up going into our small grants program and we give that away too. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, you know, we generally, we don't really charge for our services. Um, w if we get real involved with um, helping someone put on a benefit, we may ask for 5%, mm -hmm. just where we realize we're incurring funds that in our heart have been already dedicated to someone else. So, yeah, you know. we like to recover them. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the foundation, it's a very small corporation, mm -hmm. and so we have a board of directors that is essentially the ongoing uh, core of the organization, all volunteer, there's no paid staff. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of volunteers when we do an event, and they give freely of their time. Mm -hmm. So Again and again and again. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And as Pat mentioned, the musicians are donating their talents and also the sound reinforcement people that are in the rooms, and it's just a, a great giving thing. Great giving things, so that that's wonderful. So let's kind of go over this again. Uh, Pat, uh, we're having a fundraiser. When is it, where is it, and who is it for? It is <laughs> at the Radisson Colonial Hotel Helena mm -hmm. on October 23rd from 2 o'clock p.m. till 9 p.m. Music all day long, 15 bands on three stages, and lots of activity. It's really fun because you, you go through the silent auction area. That'll take 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you bid on a few things. You go in, you catch some, some tunes, have a little lunch, and go back out, see how your bid's going, <laughs> and buy a 50-50 ticket. And, and by then, you've met you know 40 mm -hmm. people you know anyway. And, <laughs> yeah. and it just turns out to be a real good time. And it's a real good time for the family. You know, we have uh, a lot of older folks that come out because they're, they're looking for music and they don't like to go to the bars or whatever. Yeah. And we get a lot of younger people that are um, looking for something to do on a Sunday with their kids and, gee, that sounds like fun. And, they, they, you know, it is. It's just a lot of fun all day long. Yeah, it's important to know that the children are welcome. They're, they have an area that they can be supervised in. And, uh, but they can also be with their parents and enjoying the bands too. Yes, yeah. as well. Yeah. They're welcome in every room of the place. In every room of the place, and it's a lot of fun. Well, so, well John, uh, what are some of your final thoughts you'd like our viewers to remember about the Lost and Foundation? Um, we really appreciate the support from the community, Pat. As mentioned, it's 21 years, and we couldn't have done that on our own. Mm -hmm. The support of the community is real important. Speaking of which, the Helena Area Community Foundation gave us a grant last week to support those small grants. Great. So we will account to them for the money that we give away from their funding. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a nice boost to have also from the community. Well, that's great. Well, thank you both for coming in for all that you've been doing over 21 years and playing in bands and making sure this happens. And you've raised uh, 450000 about, and you've helped people raise about 450000 So about 900000 you've generated. 
that has really helped a lot of people. Thank you for doing that. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Again, and for our viewers, you know, we're talking about the Lost and Foundation. This is the 21st year, the 45th annual uh, or semi-annual event that's coming up October 23rd. That's on a Sunday. It's always on a Sunday, and it's from 2 o'clock until 9 p.m. The uh, silent auction ends about 7.30, so you might want to be there to make sure you put that last bid in <laughs> to get what you want. They have a lot of wonderful items. You can contact them on Facebook or at their website if you would like to donate items or to donate money. Money goes a long ways, too. It's the universal uh, language of uh, health care. For Community Pulse, I'm Brian Lamore. Thank you for joining us.